Welcome everybody and thanks for coming to our monthly volunteer support meeting today. For the better part of the meeting, we are going to be having an instruction by me on how to cut your own bangs from the comfort of your own home using only regular kitchen scissors. Okay, on second thought, maybe we should just stick to our regular scheduled meeting topics. <laughs> I know some of you have probably come straight from work and haven't had a chance to eat yet, so I've picked up uh, some food for the meeting. So I know Charlie is gluten-free and Murdoch, you're a vegetarian, so I have some food options for you guys as well. So please help yourself throughout the meeting. Uh, I thought before we'd start, we'd do a quick check-in to see how everyone is doing during this trying time. So Seeker, do you want to share with everyone what the past month or so has been like for you? Hmm. Well, some of us do like to eat our feelings in times of stress. Murdoch, how are you doing with social distancing and self-isolation? Just trying to keep busy, keep your mind on other things. I get it, I get it. And Charlie, how are things going for you? Okay, using this time to brush up on your music skills. Good for you. Uh, Griffin and Peekaboo. You mentioned that you've been feeling a little caged up lately. I think that's pretty normal. I think a lot of people are feeling that way for sure. Uh, last, certainly not least though, Cinders, how have things been going for you? You're having a hard time understanding why you have to practice physical distancing because you feel perfectly fine. I get it, but we all have to do our part to ensure the safety of ourselves and of others. So we appreciate the sacrifice that you are making to help keep everyone safe. So, okay, thanks for that check-in everyone. If nobody has any further questions or comments, uh, let's begin our topic for today. So today's training topic is developing sensitivity. When dealing with the issue of sensitivity, it's important to also discuss how biases play a role in this topic. What is a bias? Everyone has biases. A bias is a tendency. Most biases, like preferring to eat food instead of, let's say, paper clips, are helpful. But cognitive shortcuts can cause problems when we're not aware of them and when we apply them inappropriately. Relying on biases but keeping them in check requires a delicate balance of self-awareness it's not unusual for us to operate from a place of inherent biases or stereotypes about others that we are unaware of. There can be biases related to sexual orientation, race, ethnicity, place of origin, religion, marital status, family status, physical or mental disability, gender, age, criminal history, and more. So we need to be aware of these biases and assumptions, beliefs, values, and perceptions. These beliefs can impact our interactions with participants, coworkers, family, and other professionals. In order to conduct our work with sensitivity, we need to examine and discuss our underlying beliefs. We must consider whether our attitudes and decisions regarding participants are related to our own personal beliefs about their behavior, gender, or religion. It's important to recognize and to respect each person's individuality and refrain from making judgments or decisions based on stereotypes or our own values about different behaviors. A power differential does exist in our relationships with participants. Workers are perceived as having power and control. We have the ability to exert influence on the participant. Again, it's important that we examine our beliefs and practice to ensure that participants are always treated with dignity and that their rights to self-determination are respected. Related to this, we must make sure, whenever possible, that participants are actively involved in decision-making that impacts them. So you might be asking, how can we be more sensitive? Well, to start, you can be aware of the meaning and impact of your own ethnic and cultural background, gender, class, abilities, and sexual orientation on your own interactions and expectations. You can also uncover respectful cultural differences. Those who share a similar culture may not always share the same beliefs as you, however. So be curious and ask participants questions about their own beliefs, keeping in mind to be sensitive of their boundaries. 
Check in with yourself regularly and evaluate your reactions to different situations, particularly when you are frustrated. Check in to see if underlying beliefs you have impact how you react to things and whether you are placing your own expectations on participants. Actively seek out colleagues from diverse cultures and backgrounds to understand information and share skills and knowledge. In order to conduct our work with sensitivity, we need to examine and discuss our underlying beliefs. We must consider whether our attitudes and decisions regarding participants are related to our own personal beliefs about their behavior, gender, or religion. It's important to recognize and respect each person's individuality and refrain from making judgments or decisions based on stereotypes or our own values about different behaviors. A power differential exists in our relationships with participants. Workers are perceived as having power and control. We have the ability to exert influence on the participants. Again, it's important that we examine our beliefs and practice to ensure that participants are always treated with dignity and that their rights to self-determination are respected. Related to this, we must make sure whenever possible, participants are actively involved in decision-making that impacts them. So you might be asking, how can we be more sensitive? Well, to start, you can be aware of the meaning and impact of your own ethnic and cultural background, gender, class, abilities, and sexual orientation on your interactions and expectations. You can also uncover and respect cultural differences. Those who share a similar culture may not share the same beliefs. Be curious and ask participants questions about their beliefs keeping in mind to always be sensitive of their boundaries. Check in with yourself regularly and evaluate your own reactions to different situations, particularly when you're frustrated. Check in to see if underlying beliefs you have impact how you can react and whether you're placing your own expectations on participants. Actively seek out colleagues from diverse cultures and backgrounds to understand and share information and skills. Acknowledge the inherent power differential between you as a worker or volunteer and the participants. Recognize the power of language. Use strength-based and person-first language. Be aware of how people self-identify and be respectful of this. Inclusive practice means treating participants with dignity and respect and recognizing their own self-determination. Normalize gender exploration on variants and never forget celebrate diversity. With regards to language, it can be a powerful device and can shape how we view people and groups. People first language has focused on putting people before a diagnosis. For example, someone who is diagnosed with schizophrenia is not a schizophrenic or a schizophrenic person, but rather a person with schizophrenia. This change of language implies that the person is not defined by the diagnosis or label. They are a person first, and there's more to them than this definition. Labeling people with problem-based language like manipulative or resistant also shapes how people perceive them. Strength-based practitioners have tried to shift the focus away from the problem and towards strength. Some questions you may want to ask yourself and think about are, what challenges are there to recognizing biases and stereotypes and how do they impact your practice with youth? Think about situations at work or school where you have recognized that you have a bias or how you have addressed it in the past. What kind of strategies could you use to make sure that biases don't negatively impact your relationships with the youth that you're working with? How would you work effectively and not impose your values on youth who, for example, are homeless, have strong religious beliefs, has been abusive towards their partner, drinks heavily, takes drugs, stays in a violent relationship, is coming out of the closet? Take, for example, gender biases. Have there ever been times where you have seen boys or men versus girls and women being treated in ways consistent to the binary gender ideas in society? These are all types of situations that need to be considered when discussing developing sensitivity. I've included some resources at the bottom of this video for some YouTube videos and other online documents from our library. 
Well, that about wraps up my training for today on developing sensitivity. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming out tonight and see you next month with a new and exciting topic to cover. And don't forget to take some snacks with you for the road.